So how's um how's Sydney? I'm in Melbourne now. Oh, you're Melbourne. Oh, okay, you were oh, in quarantine, yeah. weren't you? I was in, I was in quarantine in Sydney, and then uh, and then they released me and came straight to Melbourne, and now Melbourne is uh, Melbourne is like real, real life again. You know? <laughs> It's kind of, it's kind of like you know, it's kind of a little bit disconcerting, but it's kind of, it's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I did see your posts on, um, I think it was Instagram, you know, about your quite surreal shots. I think one was upside down, and it's just yeah, when you laugh. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I didn't post too much stuff because I was like, you know what, people will just think I'm mental anyway. <laughs> Sometimes on Instagram, we just get bored and like, I'm just gonna post some weird shit, and you're like, I got you. <laughs> My mom was like, you know, you know, people are gonna think you're a bit nuts, and I was like, all right, yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> Maybe they think. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <all right. laughs> uh, um, so I was gonna say, um, I've seen, I saw the film last night. I'm, I have to, I always leave it to the day before, before I, you know, I watch it, then I get to speak to the person involved. So um, it's a cracking coming of age sort of morality tale, you know, to without giving too much away, obviously. It starts off with obviously the funeral, and then towards the end, it's you know it's it's the, obviously the, the the left school become a man over the summer, um, making that decision. What, what would you do? So that's what I took from it. You know, what would you do in that position, Matthew, the character Matthew? Um, and I guess that's what you wanted from this film. You know, you wanted people to come away from it thinking it's still in my head now. I'm still thinking, you know. And which is a good thing because normally you watch a film which is linear and it's just like you know typically you know you know what to expect but I, I love films like this which make you you know even question what you would do in that position is that what you want i know it's a long sort of question sorry but no no no, no. I, i'm really glad you got that from me because because that was that was the idea behind it um for me it, it, the film grew as i was writing it and it became it became that, and and that, that became one of the most interesting facets to it was aside from 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 you know the, the music and the visuals and all the other characters and the kind of general story. I was like, I really wanted you to, to look at that fundamental question which Matthew asked at the end, which is, how, would you do the same thing? And and I, and I I found myself fascinated myself going, if this if this was my friend had done this, what mm. would I do? And that's kind of what I wanted to pose because I always remember talking to my mom. And we'd watch movies when I was in my teens and she'd always talk about the moral dilemma. And I remember being like, what are you talking about? Let's just watch the movie. But then I found it interesting because if, if I wanted it to be a movie that you have a conversation about afterwards and go, well, would I do this? Or if my friend did this, and let's say my two friends are Matthew and Carney, um, would I be okay with what Matthew's done? Well, well, what I want to know what Matthew's done. And, and, and then, but then also the question, you know, and now you've seen it is, and I also kind of left this ambiguous and purpose, and I hope that comes across that you're actually still not entirely sure what Carney has uh, or hasn't done. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is also meant to be, you know, a little subtly the idea that he he is this 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 kind of pretty crass character, and everything he does is quite deplorable. However, from a purely um, legal point of view and 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 a, and a philosophical point of view. Has he actually, he did the one thing, but at the same time, has he really done anything that would justify him being killed? But yeah. I wanted you to feel like you wanted, you wanted to be supporting Matthew, but at yeah. the same time, oh, hang on, is that the wrong feeling I had? Because yeah. you're being dragged in by that. Because like you say, with Kenny's character, you don't know because it could be all in his head. You see the video of the scenes, you know, I can say that in America, when he goes to America and, you know, and you don't know if if it's true or not and then you start thinking has he got mental health issues which obviously he has but then you start thinking well with, with matthew character maybe he should have could have helped him another way rather than the way without giving anything away that he did you know and like you say it's, it's always like the doubt isn't it these doubts there well exactly and the way the way that he did go through it and um, um he didn't really approach having a conversation about it properly but what, what he ended up doing is actually doing the exact same thing carney did but mm -hmm. he's got a different justification for what he's doing. So they kind of end up becoming this mirroring of each other and actually both both going down this certain road. And you're like, hang on, which one, which one is more justifiable and which one is correct and which one makes it okay or not? And obviously it's based on a book um, by Rob Delaney. Did, did you, when you first read the book, what did you take from it? I mean, did you sort of, was it sort of, did you read it in the premise that you were going to make into a film or did you read it and then, you know, just go back to after a few years and think you're going to write the screenplay to this or how did it come about? Uh, well, actually, when I read it, um, 
I, I didn't have any idea of making it into a film. I actually just read it and I actually just found, found myself having a very visceral reaction to it because, because the book, you know, the book is quite strong and quite powerful. And, and basically what the character of Carney does and how, how his friends react to him, I found really interesting because you're dealing with this very visceral, pulpy use of, of language that Rob deals with, but really getting into these characters' heads and getting into the character of Carney's head in the book, I thought was really interesting because it's, it is quite deplorable. And then seeing how his friends react to him and how they see things, and it became this kind of weird, sort of dark, um, dark, fascinating movie about these, about these kids coming of age, in inverted commas, whereby these, these, these kind of terrible things are happening in the book Carney's even more deplorable as it were but I wanted to I didn't want to go down that road entirely because on purpose wanted to explore the fact that what was real and what wasn't real and also what do you actually know that he's done and, and not not to give him an out but at the same time try and understand this character a bit and sort of almost use this movie as a starting point for where he would go possibly yeah you know yeah I mean with Rob Doyle then does he did you sort of uses sort of i don't know did you approach him quite early on when you were writing the screenplay or did you sort of how yeah. old was he with this no no he, at, the, at the start we, we sat down with a couple of beers and, and we so i met rob because i would written a book um and we both had, had a book nominated for the same book award so i read all the, the corresponding books and then um richie boulder who produced this movie came to me and said can we make your, your book into a movie and i said i said no because i said rob doyle's written this book that is that is much more interesting to me and I think Rob's book is incredible. So myself and Rob had, 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 had a chat and had a couple of beers. And I was like, this is what I want to do with your book. And he really liked my ideas and thoughts on it. And we kind of banged around a couple of ideas at the start. And then he basically gave me free reign to go and make my interpretation of this movie. Because he's like, look, you know, it's it, we're both artists. You know, he trusted me because I, I same way, you know, I was like, look, I'm going to be careful with your writing. But at the same time, I'm going to make my interpretation of it. Some things will be in it. Some things won't. That will, and I said the reason, you know, that would all change again with editing, editing, but I'm also making a visual tapestry and using music and I'm going to tear away a couple of characters and add in some other stuff to make my, my interpretation of what your story was. And I've got to ask you about the cast. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I mean, I, I think I saw Numi replace, replace in there at some at one yeah. point. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how what who was the draw then because i know i i spoke to craig roberts recently when he did eternal beauty and he had sally hawkins once he had sally hawkins on the cast it sort of drew the rest of the casting but how did, how did he work with you with this was it because your name was attached to it or was it because you uh, had a goal well, well yeah it, it was you know so, so dean chapman was was the first person to cast and and then finn and then i kind of so i wanted to cast people that kind of fit for the fit for the film first and then just kind of build it around who it was mm. and and people just seemed to really respond to the script and some people I'd worked with before, Numi I'd worked with before, and we're, we're working about doing a different project. She loved the script and she wanted to just come and be a part of it. Travis loved the script and we had good long chats about it. He wanted to be involved in it. And, and same with like Anya and Ferdia, people just responded to what it was and wanted to be a part of it. So it was kind of, there was never really, it just was one of these things that just happened that we just really tried to get people who I really adored as actors. Like, I love this person. It's like, who can we get to play Connie's dad? And I was like, I love Connor Hill. If we, and then Connor Hill, Connor real, Connor's a gentleman and he loved it. Mm. But it was very much, we had, we got sort of lucky about people were available and we had a very short time window to shoot. We literally, you know, we still weren't sure we were going to shoot six weeks before shooting. And we like, we have to shoot because otherwise we're never going to get uh, Dean and Finn and Anya and Ferdia and Travis and all these people who are available at the same time. We had four weeks and we just had to go for it. And it was like, we really had, it just was one of those serendipitous things that people were available. And once we knew everyone was available, like we're going to do this now, you know, if you push it, well, if you push it, then it'd be five months to go by or three yeah. months or six months. And you've got a totally different cast. It's a whole different thing, which, which is just, yeah. So it was a four week shoot. That's impressive. It was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> it was full on. It was full on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lack of sleep, man. Lots of coffee. Eh? It was a bit rock and roll. It was a bit, it's a bit like the movie, to be honest, mate. You know what I mean? It was like, What's the yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like, and then I remember at the time going to my AD and going to Richie Bulger, producer, because I was like, here, so, so Numi's actually going to show up on Monday. And this is on like Friday night. And they're like, what? I was like, yeah, I think she's going to come in on Sunday. And, and Numi's going to come in. And then we're going to shoot Numi on Tuesday and she has to go. They're like, well, I don't understand. I was like, well, yeah, she's gonna come in and do a scene. So it was that kind of it's that kind of movie. We didn't know we had Ralph and Jason until two weeks into the shoot, and then we're really? still trying to 
Yeah, yeah, it was just trying to pass what you landed. And then Ralph really liked it was available. And Ralph came over and did, did that part. Yeah. So it was just one of those things. We just we just pulled it together as quick as possible. Dan Hubbard was our cast and director, and he was great. And we just we went for it and just trusted that that stuff would happen. So do you do you sort of want things like that where it's like a last minute dot com or even when you're shooting when you got you got available a character or sorry, an actor mm. or no? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, no, it was, listen, for, for my producer, for my producer, Richie, I think, I think, you know what, it, it aged him, it aged him for sure. Like, but even stuff like em, Emmett Scanlon, who's like a dear, dear friend of mine, and I was best man at his wedding, uh, he, he, he wasn't even sure he was, he has dates because he was doing Peaky Blinders at the time, and he wasn't sure if his dates were going to work when we needed him, because we had such a short time frame, I was like, we can only shoot your character on this week and he's like well i'm only available for this week and i was like well that doesn't work for me so i need you to be available for these two days and we kind of just waited because i was like i really want people i wanted susan lynch and i wanted emmett and i was like right we just have to make this work yeah so there's a lot of moving around and just i just basically yeah i like him emmett's, emmett's one of my favorite actors he's, he's a cracking actor he's, he's, he's brilliant he's brilliant yeah. i think in two scenes in this movie emmett's just like superb <laughs> Yeah, like, he sometimes he goes and he goes I'm only in the movie for two scenes and I was like mate you're in like two scenes where everyone remembers exactly all about your character and they know your entire character in those two scenes and you don't need as they like, don't even need to be in the movie anymore I was like you just take over the movie then yeah he did steal it didn't he on those two scenes he did steal yeah. it for people to watch it um, yeah. so when, when did you shoot the film then well, obviously it was pre-COVID are we talking two it was actually about two years ago so we finished about a year and a half we were meant to release this time last year yeah so, which would have been the, the appropriate time when it was going to come out. And then we just, with COVID, you know, everything yeah. changed. And then like, you know, you couldn't even, we couldn't be sure what festivals to do. We didn't want to do online stuff. And, you know, we were waiting for the last 12 months, basically, because of COVID. We were meant to come out this time last year, but like everything, everything just got pushed, you know? So, yeah. so it was kind of like February last year is when everything started to change and everyone just went, oh, hang on a second. Right. And then, yeah. So you had no, you didn't do any reshoots or anything like that over the last twelve months. No, no. we didn't. Really, couldn't get reshoots. I couldn't get my cast to do reshoots. I've no time. <laughs> like, literally, there was the only possible reshoots in this whole movie is if I wanted to do an establishing shot of like a street. Right. <laughs> That's basically it. You know what I mean. <laughs> But no, I, it's a cracking film. I enjoyed it, man. Honestly, I really did. I, I, you know, I was watching the first like twenty minutes. It was very like to, to, back to like train spotting, you know, on on fast forward a little bit because obviously you crammed a bit in, you know, when it was all about the party scene and leaving school and all the rest. And maybe my school well, after school wasn't just like that. Maybe a couple of years after it was, but maybe a bit, <laughs> you know. But but still, it, it was good. Uh, to it back to like train spotting, then obviously it takes a dis different sort of pathway. You know, and it's all about, like I say, I mentioned a little about morality and what would you do. Um, so yeah, I, I I really enjoyed him, and I really did. So um, so what's so, so what's next for you then? Obviously, you're going to be are you doing you doing some films at the moment, aren't you? I guess is that right? Or I have, I have a film coming out. I think it's going to be out this year called The Seller for Brendan yeah. Muldown, which is um, but they're they're in the middle of, of editing that. Uh, and but then I directed another movie called Grey Elephant, which we just finished. Um, okay. which is sort of more of a Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. I did that last October. So we just finished that before I came out here. And now I'm doing a show for NBC called La Brea. So we shoot, we shoot here for the next six months. Uh, um, so, so yeah, yeah. So the, the other director when you've done, the Grey Elephants, how is that different from, obviously, the film we're talking about now? So. Very different movie. It's more of a kind of a satirical black comedy around a dinner party, and it's a bit kind of, it's kind of funny and mad and full of pathos and I, I wanted to basically I want to make I was like what can I make uh, illusionist pictures produced it who did um the COVID skin. related film isn't it is that right am I right it is in terms of only because it's set during the pandemic but there's nothing really about it I more wanted to explore these five different characters that kind of all are very uh, exploring everything in a different way and it's to do with like it's to do with marriage and life and relationships and these people and it be, kind of becomes this kind of um my interpretation of all these kind of people it's more of a kind of um uh, my, an observational dark comedy um, about these people um, in this situation, you know. Um, so yeah. So when is that very different movie? Very different movie. Right. Okay. I I I, I only asked because it's, it's it's. Have you think? Have you found your niche then? Do you think you you want to just try quite a few different genre specific sort of films or? Yeah. 
I, I don't know yet. I'm still like, I, I, I made a horror film, uh, The Inside, about, about eight, nine years ago. And I was, mm. I was trying to explore. And I, from making that horror movie, I learned, I made, I made that movie to actually understand directing actors and characters. Like, I think like the movie, The Inside is, is very flawed, but there's some really cool stuff in it from a music point of view. And the, and the acting is superb in it. Because I very specifically wanted to try certain techniques, so I, I'm I you know and I write I write a lot of various different different things, and I think <coughs> the, I write a different to the scripts, and I've got a couple of horror things, I have a thriller, and then I have a romantic. I just like to make stories about people and what kind of seem what kind of story makes sense. So I, I don't know yet. Ask me in a few years, and you can, you can tell me. I'm like you should only stick to that. Don't do any more about rom coms. A terrible idea. Go back. <laughs> So are you, you obviously always still learning then. I mean, what did you take from the current film then? What, what you know, the boys, what, what, what have you taken from there that maybe you've, you know, you will do? I don't say, are there any mistakes in there that you've, you've picked up or none? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, some of it, I mean, I think, I think I tried to put in a huge amount of ideas in here, the young men, you know, and they, I learned an awful lot from the editing point of view, you know, because a lot of the movie came, there was a lot that we left in the ed editing floor and the stuff that you kind of miss like yeah. I wish that was still there. I wish that might be there, and you know, and and four weeks is a very short time to make a movie that I think was quite an ambitious movie in terms of trying to pull all the threads together. And um, I think it really works. I'm really proud of it. But there's always things you're like, oh, if I had more time, I would have done this differently, and maybe it could just gone here, or mm -hmm. or kind of gave it this character a bit more, or kind of pull these elements here. But at the same time, this the movie. At the same time, though, I I think that's a kind of a, um a misleading argument even to yourself because a movie becomes what it is yeah. and then afterwards you look at it differently but at this when, when you're making the film you're making something and i think there's a point you make a piece a, a movie or a project and you're like and then it's finished yeah because then six months later you, you you would do something entirely differently but then that means like we shot the the nightclub scene for example where we did the opening credits i then had planned entirely differently in my head and then we had no time and suddenly we had no time so i had to shoot that in just like four shots so we shot the whole thing in one shot mm. and then just changed different lenses and we just played the band playing live and then that whole opening credits became a, a living breathing piece that became our credits that wasn't the plan with that scene oh, okay. it just it became something mm. so it's like a lot of things just kind of happen and then grow and suddenly you're like this is what this scene is now you know and especially when you got such a short time frame stuff changes you kind of roll with it and it becomes organically something else so it's almost like yeah, I might look at stuff and go, I just learn how to maybe deal with things or manipulate things differently or be more specific from a character point of view or more specific from a visual point of view or learn how to open things up or take things down. So a lot of that's kind of technical and pacing and so forth. But yeah. the rest of it, you're like, it happens and you just kind of, it breathes and it becomes, once people say lines and become these characters and James shoots it, it becomes a different thing. You're like, oh, it's this now. Well, I, I just say, like saying, and here are the young men, it's a very, very, it's it's a, the production value of it's fantastic you know it's it's you've done a fantastic job you and the rest of the crew have done an amazing job with it because it comes across okay. as you know not something that was shot in four weeks that's why i'm talking my head around and i keep going back and say the boys when i say the boys i mean the characters are three characters you know um but th there is character development there you know when, when you pick it up you know and but like you say if you had more time maybe you would have gone even deeper into you know more would you say more development to the characters yeah i mean i mean possibly possibly but then maybe i would use that time to be to be more ambitious with some of the shots yeah. who knows you know i mean because james mather um shot the movie beautifully and michael moyne did our, our productions and he, he did a beautiful job and it's like you know well if you had more time things might have been better or might have been worse depending but it's like there was some something kind of you know just just kind of edgier pants making something that kind of gave it a certain energy and I think that's what, and that's what you, that's what I embraced with this movie, because that's what it needed to be. You know? And I like the nod to Joy Division when, when the character, and his character seeing control. But obviously, the films, the, the title of the films based on um, New Decades. Am I right? Yeah, well, it's a Joy Division song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But well, I, I had, to, I mean, I had, I had to, I had to, and I was like, you know, who, who, who doesn't want to have, doesn't want to have like, you know, the the, the, the character of, of Matthew. You know, this the, the hot chick in the movie is singing a Joy Division song. I, 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 was, I was like, when you're a kid, it's like that's every that's every young teenager's dream, isn't it? But the chick you're trying to date, yeah, the chick you're trying to date is chick singing Joy Division in a bar. You're like, oh, yeah, mate, hey, I've always wanted to watch something where they they had a song like from Joy Division being sung in it, and, and this 
When that when she started singing that, I'm thinking, wow. I mean, was it her singing? And you singing it, or was it another? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah really? She sang it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. She, she's she's got a good voice. I mean, she's a great. But she's I just really. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, last question. I mean, I was. I was going to ask you about how has lockdown been for you before the hotel situation? Well, how has it been for the last 12 months? <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 the first six weeks was kind of fun because you had no responsibility. And then I found it really frustrating to living on my own. But then honestly, what I did was uh, I wrote Grey Elephant and then, and then I put my energy into trying to make that movie. And then that came together with Illusionist and, and the producer, Miriam. And Amar, and I, I kind of just tried to go, okay, what can I do with this time to, to, to make something? So I wrote an awful lot and I finished a bunch of scripts, but I basically wrote and, and made Grey Elephant, which I'm really proud of. Right. Um, I just, but I try, I, again, with that movie, you know, I know a lot of my own feelings from a different became part of all those characters because, you know, you're living with yourself for that lockdown. Yeah. Uh, in a good way and a bad way. And I developed an awful lot more patience than I didn't have before. Um, and I just tried to explore a lot of those feelings in those characters. Um, but I like to think that I'm a bit more, uh, yeah, a little bit more patient and less, um, yeah. 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 Well, you, you survived the two weeks in a bloody hotel in Sydney. I mean, it wouldn't, wouldn't be any shitty hotel, I guarantee, but, you know. <laughs> it, it was fine, yeah, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I'll be honest I actually, I actually just watch a load of movies, I'll be totally honest with you. I just yeah. watch movies all the time. So I could have been worse, you know. <laughs> I thought you'd be there when the language on Duolingo or something like that for two weeks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but well, it's hard to focus though a little bit, isn't it, though, at the same time? I found sometimes you'd be like, you'd think, oh, I've got all this time. I need to do 55 million things. And I was like, and then it just became hard to focus because you, you find yourself going, if I'm not using all this time to do mm -hmm. something productive, then you get a bit fed up and pissed off because you feel like you wasted the time. Yeah. You know, I tried to not be too hard on myself and just work a little bit and the rest of it just watch Goodfellas. All right. So, what, what what other films do you watch then? To, you know, to get inspiration from while you were there in the hotel. In the hotel in the last one, and um, what did I watch? I watched uh, I watched Merine. Have you seen you know the Vincent Cassel movies, Mezzarine? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I had I've actually brought a load of DVDs with me because I didn't know what they'd have in the hotel. So I had like I've got I got a well, I think I've got a cool DVD collection. I don't know anymore because no one knows DVDs. So I brought a load of DVDs and I just ended up watching watching stuff like Merine. And uh, and pretty much a lot of Tarkovsky and and, uh, and uh, pretty much I I started started reading David Lynch's biography in lockdown and then watching all of his movies start to finish and I did the same with Oliver Stone and I started doing the same with Scorsese and just sort of right. watching them and then reading his biography at the same time because it was like like Oliver Stone and and, and David Lynch's biographies are fascinating mm -hmm. and then I thought it was, I I loved watching like um reading Oliver Stone's biography and then then watching Platoon. And then, because before he made Platoon, he had to make all these other movies just trying to get Platoon made. And then when you watch Platoon, and you're like, you've read about just what he went through to make that movie, and also his his thoughts about the movie. And I was like, hey, you watch the movie differently. And I was like, oh, this is so. That's kind of what I've spent the time doing. It was good to do that. But I, I'm I'm getting the gist here that you you like that sort of specific, you know, gangster type. You know, I don't know because you you know, obviously it's because he's in Capaldi, that, that you know, there's a link there between what sort of films they make. And I know Platoon's obviously a war film, but is that something you want to sort of delve into in the future? Maybe that sort of genre, you know? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I kind of want to make films that I want to watch. Mm. And I think the films that, the films that had an impact to me were like, um, you know, early Kieslowski and, and, um, and, and some Gaspar Noe and, 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 and that kind of stuff. And, and just, and like La N, for example, and, and, and just Kasovitz's stuff, just, yeah. just stuff that kind of made me feel something and that visually, visually were really, really interesting. And then trying to, you know, so something that has like a cool soundtrack feels a bit visceral, yeah. you know, and you feel like you've just watched a movie yeah. and like, all right. And I, and then also that connects you to a character and go, oh yeah. And you, you kind of really believe in it, but at the same time you've been dragged along for a journey in a cinematic way, but then you're left afterwards going, I was saying, you watch Apocalypse Now, you're like, this is yeah. mental, but exhausting, but then you can't stop thinking about why is that happening? And do yeah. how do I feel about that? You know, you know what? I'm, I'm just I know I've just gone over time. I think, but I've got to say, you mentioned a good sound. Have you seen Gamora, the TV series? Gamora. Yeah. They, oh, I haven't seen the series. No. Oh man, know. if no. you want, you want a good story, you want character development, you want to form over the characters and not and, and there's so many twists in it. But the soundtrack is off the scale. I mean, if you you know we're talking Hans Zimmer quality soundtrack, and, it, and it, there's four seasons of it. Um, I. Yeah. I 
I'm addicted yeah, to it, mate. Gamora. Gamora. It's on have Sky you, Atlantic. Have you finished it? No, I'm on season four now. So I watched, you know, nearly back to back. I, I, you know, you watch this episode and you have to sort of watch the next one and then it's 12 o'clock and then one o'clock in the morning. I love that. I love that. No, I actually want to watch you're saying it, and that actually makes makes sense. I do want to watch that now. Yeah. Please do, honestly, come on. And you can, I might message you on social media, but I swear by it, you know, believe me. Okay. That's why I was going when, when you're talking about Goodfellas and things like that. I'm thinking if you want a long Goodfellas, watch yeah. Gamora. It's an Italian and Neapolitan, but you know, obviously it's subtitles. So, but yeah, yeah it's it's world class. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it and I'll let you know on Twitter how I feel about it. Yeah, please do, man. I'll say, yeah, well, I'll message you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, well, thank you for your time. It's been, I've enjoyed talking to you. I really have enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been a re I really enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, have a good morning, man.